everybody. Uh, welcome to the cooking series, Recipe for the Cure. I'm Robin McConnell, and this is my sous chef, and my friend, and my co-worker, Pam Stoffberg. We're both oncology dietitians at the John Thorak Cancer Center at Hackensack University Medical Center, and we're joining you from our beautiful cooking studio uh, here in the Cancer Center. Since we can't do our regular cooking studio programs in person, we were doing them weekly, uh, for the last 11 years actually, um, we're so excited to be able to join you virtually and continue the tradition of sharing delicious and nourishing recipes with all of you. So we want to give a special shout out to Azai for sponsoring this new program. We would not have been able to do it without you. So all of the information that you need, uh, the recipes, the shopping lists, and the nutrition information uh, to cook along with us, or if you want to take it and you know do these recipes a little bit later, are available in your confirmation email or in the link below. So what do you say we get cooking? Okay, so um, thank you for helping me out today, You're Pam. You're welcome, my pleasure. Uh, we've been doing this for a lot of years together. Yeah. Yes. So uh, the recipe today is uh, called salmon zucchini burgers, and we're actually using a little bit more than zucchini. We're going to be using uh, zucchini and also yellow squash. So we use this a lot, and actually we've used this in a previous recipe in our uh, cooking studio. Uh, in a meatloaf that was made with turkey. So we're going to kind of take that same theme and we're going to add it to salmon burgers. And where this recipe came from is um, <laughs> there's a, a, a really wonderful catering uh, operation in my town. And back in the day when we just got our cooking studio going, we were always looking for professional chefs and you know local businesses to come in and demonstrate something that they really um, you know feel proud of and um, I had been buying their salmon burgers for many years and the light bulb went off in my head saying salmon is a healthy food I love these salmon burgers and I do remember that they were a very colorful burger so they had zucchini in them they had uh, yellow squash in them there was something red in them I wasn't quite sure what it was but I loved them they were delicious I hounded that poor uh, store owner to please come and do a cooking studio program and you know I get it it's not for everybody but you know he politely declined and I politely walked away but I wasn't done with these salmon recipes yet so I kept buying the the salmon burgers and decided I'm going to figure out how to make these and we're going to do these in our cooking studio so that's how that rest this recipe came about so I'm going to get started because they do take a little bit of time to cook. So as I mentioned, um, it's a very colorful burger and, and any time that you can stretch something out, you know, salmon is expensive. And um, if you can stretch it out with some vegetables, it's a double bonus because we're getting added nutrition, we're getting um, some additional color. Again, it's a very, very pretty uh, dish. So I'm going to shred the vegetables it it's not you know a hard and fast recipe either so it's about a cup and a half of shredded squash i'll call them so we'll do some of that and some of the zucchini you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of the uh, skin because not only is that where the fiber and many of the nutrients reside but it is also uh, where the color is and that's what makes everything so pretty now the thing about zucchini is that it's a very wet vegetable so that does not do well in our burgers so what we have to do is take um, the zucchini and the squash and I'm just going to put them in this is a very very fine you could use cheesecloth you could use uh, unbleached muslin this was a towel actually that I it was very light I actually use these towels to line my bread baskets when I'm doing my sourdough bread and so you just want to gather it up and don't be shy but you want to really wring it out 
And you can see, get a little bit of bicep and tricep workout here. You wanna really wring out as much of the water as you possibly can. Now, don't throw this away because I have a bucket that I keep in my freezer, a plastic bucket that I use to put all of these vegetable juices in. I'm just gonna let this sit here for a uh, little bit. Let's wash my hands quick. I think the use of the squashes though, <clears throat> like you said that they were moist, excuse me, they are, but I think that they're also nice and soft, unlike say a carrot that goes, it doesn't change the texture as it compared to the salmon. Right. So I think that that's like a lovely uh, play. Right, and you wouldn't necessarily see the carrot in the salmon burger because we're using orange, you know? So, but yes, it's great. So hold on to your juices, pour them into your uh, bucket in your freezer, and then when you're ready to make soup, you've got some stock. So we're going to start here. I have just a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And we're gonna let that get. So we just want to soften the vegetables a little bit. So I have a small onion. I might not use all of this. Um, so we wanna just get some of the onion in there. And I will say that though I was not able to get the recipe from my, um, my local uh, shop, I did ask him a number of pointed questions because I was curious to see you know, what was in it and get as close as possible. Because um, I'm inventive, but not that inventive. So this is actually some sun-dried, uh, not sun-dried tomatoes, it's uh, roasted red pepper and I just bought a jar. And I usually keep a small jar in um, the, you know, in my cupboard just for such application. So I think this takes about uh, two tablespoons of sun-dried tomato, I mean of uh, roasted red pepper. So I'm gonna cut those up, get them a little bit smaller. that. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic, so about a clove or a teaspoon if you're using chopped. And then you always want to be careful. You never add the garlic first to the pan unless you really want to crunch them uh, because garlic can burn very easily and it's nice to have that little bit of a buffer. So you can already start to see that we're building a little bit of color. So I'm gonna give this one good quick squeeze again. Hmm, more is coming out. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to add them to the pan. And now you can see that it's very colorful. So as I said, I kind of commandeered this recipe, but the more times I made them, it just still wasn't coming out the same. And I knew that there was something missing. And that something missing, I discovered, was Old Bay seasoning. And it's uh, it's a proprietary formula. If you look online, it's hard to find the exact ingredients to it. But the spices are spices and herbs, including, so it's red pepper and black pepper, salt and paprika. They also make a blackened version of it, which I thought would be really, really nice if you wanted something, you know, like maybe yep. with a little bit of heat. Because yep. you can change this up a little right. bit. This Old Bay um, is absolutely the flavor of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, that's where it's kind of originated, and any fish restaurant that you would walk into down in Annapolis or the Baltimore area, it absolutely hits you in the face and you're like, ah, fish, delicious. I know, it's like a crab cake couldn't even be a crab cake exactly. unless it had Old Bay seasoning exactly. in it. All right, so our salmon today is it's actually a sockeye, it's a previously frozen. So the nice thing about salmon is that we really can get them 
uh, can get salmon in many different forms. So you don't have to be um, concerned. I've actually made this from frozen salmon that I defrosted and it came out just as nice. Um, so what we're going to do here is just cut this into like one inch cubes and then we're going to get our food processor out. But we, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you were lucky enough to um, have the skin removed. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. So the skin is not actually difficult to remove, but you wanna know something? It just made it so much easier to do it. It's, it, it, it is pretty easy. Um, to remove it, but yes, I did take this, the skin out. And you just also want to run your finger along the, uh, the spine here just to make sure that there are no um, uh, you know, little bones that are there. So we're gonna cut these up and give the food processor a little bit of help. Uh, and the key here is to, we want to pulse it. So we want chunks. We want to be able to see the salmon, I think is, is, is the, the key message here. We want to be, we don't want puree and we don't want pate. So we want chunks. All right, so we'll get the food processor going. So you can count along with me if, if I say, We're gonna pulse it, all right? Count with me. So we got one, two, three, and then open it and look at it. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this one more time. Almost there. Almost there, yeah. Okay, that's it. We'll take this out and I think this is good. So again, we want the vegetables to be slightly translucent, soft, but not mush. Okay, so we're gonna put that in our pan. Do a nice clean it out. Oh uh, yes, actually I'm gonna need that too saute them. Okay, so you can see the beautiful color that we have in here. And then we are going to add the salmon. And already you can see the beautiful orange. And this sockeye is particularly orange, which is really, really nice. Okay, I love this recipe because there is no starchy filler in it. Basically, what you see is what you get in terms of, I wanna just get this started, yeah. Um, so this is the recipe, except I got the Old Bay. And I really do think it makes a difference. It's um, a terrific seasoning and it just, it just wakes it up. So as I was making this, I thought to myself, well, this is very Chesapeake Bay, Absolutely. you know, it's very crab cakey. And, but I also thought this would be really nice if you wanted to make it a little bit more Mediterranean. You could actually use those roasted red peppers in there instead of the, um, no, you could use the sun-dried tomatoes <laughs> instead of the roasted red peppers. And, um, and then it would give it, you know, a little bit more umami flavor, I think. Um, you could also do an Asian version of this um, by adding some, uh, some chopped ginger. Yep. You could put a little bit of soy in there, a little bit of sesame oil. Yep. I think that would be really nice. Salmon and those Asian flavors are, are delicious together. So this makes about six burgers. So it takes uh, a pound and a quarter of salmon, which makes each salmon cake about, you know, one, uh, uh, three and a third, three and a half ounces, which is perfect because that also gives a really nice pop. 
punch of omega-3 fatty acids. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So, okay, let me just clean up over here a little bit. Okay, so like with the meatloaf recipe that we made, we don't want to pack these burgers because we do want them to be soft. And we need to let the pan and the little bit of oil, so I am using some canola oil in here. And we want the pan to be hot because we want the, um, we do want the salmon burger to just sizzle a little bit in there, but we're not frying it. So I'm just putting a little bit of oil in there and I am using our beautiful non-stick pans here. It's hard to find non-stick pans that work well on these induction burners. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that down. And then we're going to take a third of a cup and just kind of simulate a patty. So I'll get them right in the pan. You see, hear that sizzle. And the fat from the salmon is going to hold it together. Sometimes it's easier just to put them down and we can press them. And then once you put them in the pan, resist the urge to move them because we definitely want to have that sizzle on the bottom and that's what holds them together and makes it possible to flip them. Look nice. So one of the things that we are encouraged to eat more of is fatty fish. So I happen to love fatty fish. I love salmon. I love sardines. Sardines, people either love them or hate them. They either make a face when I suggest it or they're like, yeah, I love them too. So, um, you know, this is just another recipe to improve uh, fatty fish intake. So yes, and the, the uh, dietary guidelines, the 2020, 2025 dietary guidelines came out in March, not in March, in November. And um, it's really a pretty remarkable document. And they do look at um, not only where we need to be in terms of our diets, but where we are as Americans in terms of our diets. And in terms of our protein intake, so they define protein intake into three categories. So we have our meat, we have our poultry, and we have our eggs. And then the second category is seafood. And then the third category is our plant-based um, protein. So that's our nuts, seeds, and um, soy-based products. And the we do pretty well in terms of the meat, the poultry, and the eggs. Um, Americans, about 70% of Americans eat what is recommended in terms of uh, uh, those types of meats. But in terms of fish, only 10% of Americans eat the recommended amount, which is eight ounces in uh, a week. So, you know, you're getting one serving yep. here, yep. and um, that is uh, about two grams of omega-3 fatty acids. And these are what we call our fish oils. So these are the oils that um, help with heart disease, that um, can reduce blood pressure, can reduce LDL cholesterol, can reduce triglycerides. But also in terms of cancer prevention, it's um, uh, people who eat more fatty fish or more omega-3 fatty acids can um, also reduce their risk of colorectal breast, and um, in particular, some of the um, liquid tumors such as leukemia and multiple myeloma. So, you know, it's, it's just a win-win situation. So we sort of have like a whole meal, um, including, you know, vegetables and our proteins all in one meal. So do you wanna, yeah. I'm gonna start with um, succotash. I'm not so sure if Robin, Told you that that's what, that's the other dish we're making oh, today. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. It's okay. 
It's called herbed corn and edamame succotash. So succotash is corn and lima beans. Um, so this is a riff on that, a modernization of that. Um, I happen to love succotash. I love edamame, I love corn, and, and the red pepper gives it such a, just a nice color. I'm not promoting, overly promoting Trader Joe's, but they have a very nice product and it's called soycotash. And it, it is what we're making here today. It's the um, uh, soy um, edamame and the uh, corn and a little red pepper and onion. And it's, 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 it's ready to go. So that's like super handy. And you could buy the edamame in many, many different forms. We just happened to get it in the pods. Yep. Um, and steam them right in the bag and um, squeeze them out. Pam's going to demonstrate uh, yeah. how, how they look. And I'm gonna flip my burgers. I just wanna say, as you're getting that in there, you wanna look around the edges here. And when you start to see them, the color coming out of yep. them, you get a sense that they're about ready to flip. So I'm just gonna look, and I want just a little bit of color on the bottom. So I always thought that succotash was a southern dish, you know, from the south. I was doing a little bit of reading, Actually, it's a Native American dish, and they think that, um, as opposed to, you know, there, let's face it, there was no mashed potatoes and apple pie at the first Thanksgiving, right? It wasn't. No, but they, 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 they are, they feel quite sure that there was succotash or some sort of mix of corn and bean at the first Thanksgiving. Uh, cranberry beans are very popular in New England, and they or, and they grow there well. And they thought that that probably was what it was. So succotash just refers to any corn with a bean product at all. So and then I think it traveled from colonial New England down to the southern states, and you know, kind of uh, also took on a life of its own there. There's many riffs on this. This is a modern riff because we're using the edamame. So he, they're so easy. Look, we got some steamed, and you just steam them, and then you push out the uh, the, the beans. They pop. Oh, see, they pop right out. They're popping all over. We the were place. chasing them all really, over. Really, we were. So they're just coming right out. They're easy. Actually, you know what? This fun thing for kids. Uh, they they would love to do this. That would be a great way to get them involved in, Absolutely. Uh, in prepping. Absolutely. And then you get them to pick up the ones that fall all over the floor. <laughs> That would be helpful too. But anyway, it's not hard at all, kind of fun, and um, they're a really nice color. And they do, I mean, I think you would mistake them for lima beans. Uh, they look almost exactly alike. Lima beans are a little bit flatter, but. I think it, the color, I like the color yeah, me too. on them. It's, I think the color is yeah. a little bit brighter. And edamame is an excellent source of protein and um, iron, um, non-heme iron. So that's non-meat iron. And again, that's uh, pretty, pretty um, important for vegetarians. So this is a great product. And not only that, it has calcium, vitamin C, iron, folate, um, and potassium, and it has 18 grams of protein in, in a cup. That is a lot. That's a lot. This is so a very is, high protein meal in general. This is a very high protein meal, but a healthy one, one that features you know, uh, the uh, omega-3 fatty acids from the fish and more protein, but from a plant-based perspective. So, you know, you can't get any better than this. All right, I think this is ready. I'm going to add in the garlic now. And we want to keep a little bit of crunch yeah, with absolutely. this, don't we? Okay. When I was growing up um, in high school and in college, my early years in college, I worked in a nursing home and um, they had a three-week cycle menu, and succotash was on the menu every third Wednesday, and nobody would eat succotash. Like, it just looked awful. It never looked like the beautiful dish that this is going to become. So that's why, you know, it's kind of nice as foods evolve, and you know, when, how long has it been that you've been able to find edamame in the grocery stores in the frozen section? It's kind of like the za'atar, you know, we're becoming a very, very globally, you know, nutritious, 
nutrition conscious um, society and it's nice to introduce yep. um, the different flavors and the different products. So it's a, it's a nice thing. So I just added the corn. Now I'm adding the edamame. It is pretty. Oh, one escaped. Get in there. Oh, I think that is prettier than lima beans. Although I will say that lima beans that you find in you know, cans or in the frozen section is nothing like the lima bean that you can grow in your garden. They actually are, when you pick a fresh lima bean, young and not starchy, they are sweet. It's like candy. It's kind of like peas. Um, I am, I love peas in my garden. It's my favorite part of the garden. I think you could buy zucchini and you could buy, you know, corn in various farm stands, but it's really hard to find fresh peas. And that is just, you know, such a nice part of starting a garden and, you know, seeing what grows, what works, what doesn't work from year to year. What I just added was a little bit of water and a little bit of rice vinegar. So this is just going to help it cook for a short amount of time. Okay, so I'm going to take my, uh, my uncooked salmon away, my cutting board away, and I'm going to take my burgers off, and then this gets a sauce with it. So I think that's almost ready. Um, but this gets a lemon dill sauce with it. So kind of like on a burger, you would put some ketchup maybe. Um, with this, this is the ketchup for this. I was thinking with, uh, with the, um, if we did, you know, this in more Asian flavors, mm -hmm. that would be nice to have a uh, wasabi mayo yep. with it, you oh. know, to add a little bit that of kick. That would be good. And that actually would be another great thing to add um, to this is maybe a little bit of red pepper flake. So I'm just taking some fresh dill and I'm going to chop that up before I get my cutting board going. So this is just another colorful addition we have. And then for awesome flavor, I'm just going to put a little bit of lemon zest in there. So you get the oils, you get the just the essential essence of the lemon that just makes this pop completely. And I'm gonna take some of our fresh basil. All right, and these our are parsley. Perfect. Chop that up and put it in as a finishing. Should be great. Mm, this is like our little farm to it table is. here. It's so fun. We have a beautiful rooftop garden uh, on the second floor of the Cancer Center that uh, we have a very uh, generous volunteers plant and maintain for us. And we are so fortunate to be able to go up there, get the fresh herbs that we need, to get the fresh vegetables. We usually have plenty of herbs. Um, it's a very Mediterranean climate up there, so our eggplants just grow beautifully. Uh, the peppers grow beautifully. Our cucumbers grow beautifully. And it's, it's just such a lovely place for our patients to be able to go and kind of get away from, you know, just the treatment aspects to have some place to go where they can feel healthy, where they can feel well, where they could feel healed. And I just think it's, it's lovely. I am going to put a little bit of salt in this. Is that good? I'm going to make sure I have everything in. Oops, I almost forgot the garlic. Put a little bit here. A little bit of garlic. I think you can use a touch more salt. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I have to control my salt. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to mix this up. Just a little bit. It's a lot of vegetables. I think I want to taste. It just looks so good. I actually made a lot of succotash this summer. La uh, last summer, the, the 
The corn was so fantastic. I used to grow corn myself, but I just found that um, it was too, I, I, I couldn't handle getting, you know, 50 or 70 ears all at once. It was just nice to be able to go to the farm stand and buy the six ears that, you know, I was going to, um, you know, eat for that meal. And it was just really nice and I could get different varieties at different times of the summer. Mm. Wow. It's hot. <laughs> but it's delicious. Mm. This is so wonderful with fresh corn. I think that frozen corn that we had today, I, you know, I can't, I can't do without the corn, but man, definitely make this with fresh corn. Mm -hmm. It is so snappy and so, um, so wonderful. Mm. It's pretty. I think great. that's, I think it's pretty good. I like the crunch to it, don't you? Yes. I, I just keep thinking back to the, uh, the succotash that I had at the nursing home, and this is just so much, so much more yeah. lovely. Prettying up. This yeah. is a beautiful dish. Look yeah. at that. Wow. So I just wanted to say one more thing about um, salmon. So salmon is uh, also one of those sustainable um, fishes that is it's something that we have to consider. You know, it's a big world to feed and it's difficult to, you know, it, it's, we wanna make sure that the food that we're eating is also sustainable um, and it's environmentally um, friendly. So all of the vegetables that we have have a much, much lower carbon footprint. So the health of our bodies is so tied to the health of our environment and it's just so amazing how those two things fit together that what's good for our bodies um, is also uh, healthy for the environment to grow that um, to reduce our carbon footprint. So with the fish, there is a uh, really terrific um, organization called the Monterey Bay Aquarium and they do a seafood watch and they print, I guess every six months. This one, I just downloaded this online. They have different consumer guides for different areas of the country. So this particular one is, is for the Northeast, that's where we are. And it's good for January through June. And they really just look at sustainable fishing practices, but also in terms of farm raised fish. About 80% of the salmon that we eat in this country is farm race and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you're eating wild though, um, in terms of sustainability, you want to, I think it's nice to check this list. So salmon on here in terms of best choices, they have um, New Zealand salmon. Um, and so that's you know something that you might want to look at. And then also good alternatives would be Atlantic salmon, that comes from the um, Pacific Northwest, from the West Coast, basically, and that can also be farm raised. So I just wanted to point that out that, you know, it's important that we get our omega-3 fatty acids, but we also want to be responsible to make sure that tomorrow, you know, we can feed um, our families, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. So I think I'm gonna plate this. Absolutely. What do you think? Absolutely. So. I think we'll start here. We have a, a lovely whole grain roll, and I'm going to take a patty. And I just wanted to kind of point out, I don't want to overtouch it, but you see how firm it is. And all I did was press it into the pan, but it holds together beautifully all on its own. There's no filler in there. There's no breadcrumb. There's no um, rice. There's no... Right. The protein of the, of the salmon just seizes up itself and just it solidifies. Just holds it together. And yeah. I'm going to put just a little dollop. Okay. Thank you. In there. Our succotash. 
And what herbs did you use in I here? I used basil and I used uh, parsley. Okay. So hold on one minute. Oh. Hold on one minute. Oh, you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> You're going to dress yours. I'm, I'm dressing mine. Dress I'm not mine. coming to the party undressed. Yeah. It gets lost a little bit, but oh, okay. there you go. Dill. Yummy. So here we go. So we want to thank you for yes. joining us. Thank you. Um, thank you. So I want to... I want to thank you for joining us. Um, we had a lot of fun doing this. I miss the cooking I studio, do don't you? I do too. I miss I miss it terribly, but I also miss all of our you know our patients and caregivers and staff that stopped by. It was it was it's a I hope that it's a warm and welcoming place. We love to share food. We love to talk about nutrition, but we also like to share. Um, and and it's a it's a nice it was a nice bonus for us to be gifted this cooking studio. So check for future events, and um, we want to make sure that uh, we thank again our sponsor, Azai. Uh, they just made all of this possible for us, um, and it's, it's just good to be able to share good food, nutritious food, and the warmth uh, that we feel for all of you. So thank you.